Good morning, friends. Welcome as you tune in uh, to the service today. Uh, We're just going to uh, open up with a word of prayer. Let's just bow our heads together in prayer. Father, it's it's good to to be able to come before you and to to worship you. And uh, we do this at your command. And Lord, it's a joy to to worship you. It's a it's a pleasure knowing who you are, what you have done, and knowing that in our own souls we are blessed as we come into your living presence. And we thank you that you are the living God, the God who reveals himself, the God who communicates, the God who saves, the God who helps, the one who blesses us in in, in every aspect of, of life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that uh, this is the day that your son rose from the grave. And it's a day when the the church of of, of Jesus Christ takes time to to, to worship the, the risen and exalted Lord Jesus Christ. So set our spirits free this day to, to do the same, to worship you. For Lord, you're always worthy of worship, no matter what's going, in our, what's going on in our lives or how we feel. You always remain worthy of praise and adoration and thanksgiving. And let us not be slow in coming forth with these things. Lord, as we stand before your glorious presence, we do so recognizing that, Lord, there's things that we do, there's iniquity, iniquities and transgressions and sins that we have committed, and we've committed them knowing darn well that they're wrong, and yet we've, we've done them, Lord. And therefore, Lord, we, we confess our evil to you. We confess the sins that we have committed against you. And ask, O oh Lord, to be cleansed, to be washed, because, Father, your promise is that if we ask for forgiveness, you will forgive. And therefore we come in confession. Let us not hide our sins, but freely and openly confess them to you, that, Lord, we may be cleansed and nothing would stand in the way of our fellowship with you today. Our Father in heaven, we think of those who are grieving today. We continue to remember uh, the family of Eleanor Fraser. Lord, we, we commit this family to you as they, as they, they, they mourn over her passing but we rejoice as well that Eleanor is now gone to be with you the God whom she professed faith in and so heavenly father uh, we thank you for the life of Eleanor we thank you for the the times of fellowship that we shared with her here in this congregation and Lord while we we miss her we 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 know where she is Lord And, uh, Lord, as we were thinking of some some weeks ago about the way to heaven, and we thank you that Eleanor knew that way, and we also know that way, that it's through Jesus Christ. And one day in in time we we shall follow. We shall go to be with you, Lord, because this is what you have done for us, Jesus. You have opened up the way of heaven for us. You have given us eternal life. And so, Lord, bless us today as we continue to worship. And we thank you for the the church of Jesus Christ that is across the globe and is growing. And we pray that it will continue to grow. Uh, And, and, and Lord, that it will be filled with people from every language, every tongue, every tribe, every nation. And Lord, we pray that it will grow here too, even through this, 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 this service today, that Lord, you would, you would be pleased to, to use it to, to open up hearts to yourself and to draw people close to you, Lord. So Lord, we pray for the, the power and work of the Holy Spirit to be upon the word as it's preached here today, but not only here, but whatever it is preached in, in, in churches all over, we pray that your kingdom will come. In Jesus' name, 
Thank you, Lord. Amen. Okay, let's turn to read uh, in John's Gospel and John chapter 15. John chapter 15. And I'm um, going to read a few verses from verse 12. John 15, reading from verse 12. Uh, Jesus says these words, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all that I have heard from my father I have made known to you. You do not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you, so that you will love one another. Amen. Uh, may God bless that short reading of his word uh, to us um, today. If you're able, I want you to turn with me for a moment to Isaiah 41 and to verse 8. And we read there, But you, Israel, are my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the descendants of Abraham, my friend. The descendants of Abraham, my friend. God calls Abraham his friend. Wow. Isn't that amazing that God says say to Abraham, he's my friend. Can you think of anything more wonderful than being called God's friend? If God was to say of you, this is my friend. Can you think of anything more wonderful than that? Being called God's friend. Not only was Abraham a child of God, but he was also God's friend. And God says that to himself. Abraham and God had a deep and intimate relationship with each other. And I think we see something of this in Genesis chapter 18. Uh, you remember on that occasion the Lord was going down to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And, um, but as he was going, he says to the angels, um, shall we hide from Abraham what we're about to do? He said, well, rather, he says, shall I hide from Abraham what I'm about, what I'm doing? And then God went on to tell Abraham what he was going to do. And you know the story how Abraham pleaded for that city. Friends, the secret of the Lord is with those who fear him. He confides in those who, who fear him, his friends. And Abraham was God's friend. Tell me, do you want to be God's friend? How would you answer me? Do you want to be God's friend? Turn back to John 15 and verses 14 and 15. You are my friend, says Jesus, if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends. For all that I have heard from my Father, I have made known to you. Jesus calls his disciples friends. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. Friendship with God. Friendship with God. Here's a question for you. What is my aim in life? What is your aim in life? 
We find a, a succinct uh, definition to that question uh, in the Shorter Catechism, where it says, man's chief end is to glorify God and enjoy him forever. Glorify God and enjoy him forever. I want to draw your attention to the word enjoy there, because it's a key word in our study today, joy. Because very often Christians lose that part of their relationship with God, the joy aspect. But we are both to, to glorify God and to enjoy Him. And from Genesis to Revelation, God calls us to enjoy Him as well as glorify Him. You know, some people outside of the, the church, outside of the free church, or perhaps in other churches, have a caricature of us. You see, as us doer and miserable, extreme killjoys. I'm glad to say that that perception is, is slowly change, beginning to change. But the caricature didn't emerge out of thin air. And you know, in every joke there's an element of truth. Are you living to enjoy God? Are you enjoying God right now? As well as glorifying Him. Because the two go together. How do we achieve that then? How do we achieve that? To enjoy God and to glorify Him. But in particular, tonight, today rather, we're looking at enjoying God. Well, I think there's, there's two possible options we could try. And the first option is to, is to, to better myself to better myself and therefore have a better relationship with God. All of us want to be, to be better Christians and, and, and wanting to better myself is, is a good thing and in and of itself is it not? However, however the, the trouble with this approach is that we find ourselves getting worse instead of better and then get very disheartened. Why? Because I, look, I, 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 lose, I, I lose sight of Jesus, my Savior, and lose intimacy with Him. How is that possible, you say? Well, as I said, wanting to, better, to be a better Christian is a good thing. But how we go about that makes all the difference. Because we can go down a road in trying to, to better ourselves that becomes all about me trying to keep a set of rules. And the emphasis then becomes I, me, myself, what I can do. My efforts. And the truth is as we saw last week, that without Jesus we can do nothing. We can't bear fruit without Jesus. Spiritual fruit. And going down this road then will leave us miserable and empty because it's a path to slavery, trying to work and trying to earn our approval before God to better ourselves. It's not a path of grace which God has called us to walk in. So let's turn to option two. And that's friendship with God. Friendship with God. Jesus here calls his, his disciples friends. And, and, and that's quite a thought, isn't it, to grasp. The Lord not only pities and saves us, but he actually calls us his friends. And it's quite a thought to get our heads round, but it's true. 
God is your friend. And if God be for, for you, who can be against you? Child of God, you can never say you have no friends to turn to. For you have one true friend in Jesus Christ. And he will never let you down. Never. We will let him down plenty of times. But he will not let you down. The hymn puts it so well. What a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend we have in him. What is friendship with God? How would you answer that? What is friendship with God? Well, to answer that, I think we have to to ask another question. And that is, what is friendship in general? What is friendship in general? When we look at human friendships, what do we see and what do we experience in human friendships? Well, first, I suggest a few things to you. First of all, friends like spending time together. Don't you like to hang out with your friends? Friends enjoy each other's company. They don't feel awkward together. They feel comfortable. Secondly, friends look forward to spending time together, don't they? They make plans to to meet up, to catch up, to do things together, to get alongside each other. Thirdly, friends know each other, don't they? As they spend time together, they get to know one another. As you spend time with your friends, you get to know them and they get to know you. They know what you like and you know what they, they they like and what they don't like and so on. You know their habits and you start to learn to know things about each other. You know what each other's interests are. You get to know their personalities better. And there is this increasing degree of experiential knowledge of each other. Fourthly, friends love each other. And the deeper the friendship, the deeper the love for one another. They care for each other. Friends, true friends, they'll care for each other because they love one another. And they look out for one another. And they, I mean, they won't, your friend won't allow someone to badmouth you if they're a true friend. I think we see an example of that in in Numbers 12, where Moses' sister and brother, uh, well, brother and sister, Aaron and Miriam, uh, were turning against Moses when, when he, uh, got, uh, he got remarried, and uh, they weren't too pleased about that. And um, they were saying things like, do you know, well, do you know, God speaks to us as well. He speaks to us, and uh, Moses is not the only guy God speaks to. And then they started bad-mouthing Moses. And God comes and he rebukes them for this. And, he's, and he says to them, I speak to prophets and visions and dreams, but with Moses I speak face to face. Plainly, and he sees my form. Why were you not afraid to speak against him? Well, I think we could say a lot more about friendship, but I think that will do for now. So what is friendship with God then? Well, I believe it's all these things that I've just spoken about. It's enjoying Him. 
It's longing for Him. It's knowing Him. It's loving Him. It's walking with Him every day, being intimate with Him, experiencing Him. Tell me, is that the kind of relationship you have with God? Well, let me tell you this. That is the kind of relationship God wants with you. And that is the kind of relationship that you can have with God. Because Jesus Christ died to reconcile us to God. And we enter into friendship with God through Jesus Christ. You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends for all things that I heard from my Father I have made known to you, says Jesus. We enter into friendship with God through Jesus Christ. But friends, it doesn't stop there. What I mean is is that some Christians enter into a relationship with God through Christ, but it never progresses much further than that, than their initial salvation. But there is so much more with God. Knowing God is not just the day we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, And now we kind of just wait to get to heaven. No, far from it. You are to get to know him more and more every day. Before you get to heaven, you can know him more and more now. Enjoying him, longing him, experiencing him. We cannot become friends with someone we never spend time with. Abraham was called God's friend. He spent time with God. God spoke to Moses face to face because he spent time with God. Enoch walked with God and was no more because he spent time with God. Noah walked with God and he was called a preacher of righteousness because he spent time with God. Jesus called his disciples friends because they spent time with him. Do you know there are, there are friends and then there are acquaintances? An acquaintance is someone you meet from time to time. You Someone you say, hello, how are you? But you don't really know them that well. You don't really spend that much time with them. However, a friend is someone you know very well, or someone you spend a lot of time with. Tell me, is God an acquaintance or a friend to you? Is he someone we say hello to every now and then, Or is he someone you are intimate with? Do you know the Lord? I'm not asking if you know the Lord exhaustively, because no one can know the Lord exhaustively, except God himself. But I'm asking you and I'm asking myself if we know him as a friend, as someone we spend much time with. I fear many Christians, and myself included, only know the Lord as an acquaintance. And that's not the kind of relationship the Lord wants with us. And I believe it's not the kind of relationship you want with Him either. God doesn't want dead, 
far more cold, distant relationship with you. God doesn't want you just to have a kind of head knowledge of him. He wants you to have a head and a heart experience knowledge and experience of him. He wants you to know him and experience him day by day. He wants you to, to and me, to, to enjoy him. How many times have you waited in his presence and asked him to, to reveal himself to you, to speak to you? Those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength and will mount up on wings like eagles, the Bible says. The Bible says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Draw near to him and, and he will come to you. Today I believe God is calling us all into a deeper relationship with him. A deeper and closer friendship with him. Is he stirring your heart to be more intimate with him so that he can be more intimate with you? Well, I said that option two, friendship with God was the path to to glorifying God and enjoying God. How? What about all the do's and all the don'ts, you say? Well, let me ask you this. Do you want to hurt your friend or your friends? No, you don't. Nor will you want to sin against God. The more your friendship with the Lord grows, the more you want to serve him, love him, <coughs> excuse me, and obey him. The more you spend time with him, the more your friendship grows, and the more you get to know him, the more you love him, and the more you love him, the more you want to obey him. It all stems from the love and grace of our God. It is his life flowing in us that leads us to walk in righteousness, to want to walk in holiness. You see, Jesus says in this chapter, abide in me, for you can do nothing without me. Jesus says, you are my friends if you do what I command you. Friends, obey Jesus. Friends, love Jesus. Friends want to be with Jesus. Friends enjoy Jesus. Friends in glorify Jesus. I have one final thing I want to say, and I'll close with this. And that is that God is the one who instigated friendship with us. We were enemies before. The Bible tells us that, that our, our, before our sins were forgiven, we were enemies of God. That by nature we were the children of wrath. God's anger was against us because of our sins. We, were, we, were, we really were his enemies. And his anger really was against us. And had we not repented and trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ, we truly would have perished in hell. But Jesus Christ reconciled us to God by his death on the cross, that you and I are now friends with God, and he is friends with us. Now, if you're not trusting in Jesus Christ for your salvation, if you have not repented of your sins 
then you are still God's enemy. He is not your friend, and his anger is against your sin. And one day he will judge you according to your sins, because the whole world will stand before him to be judged. But friend, there's hope for you. There's hope for you. And I want to share that with you. You see, they called Jesus the friend of tax collectors and sinners. That is because God sent him to tell sinners like you and me the way to be saved. He came not for the righteous, but for the unrighteous. And therefore, he was called the friend of sinners because he came in mercy to them. And in mercy, he comes to us and calls us to turn away from a life of unbelief and sin to a life of trust in Jesus Christ and to follow God. Jesus has become the friend of sinners. He has died to save sinners. And this is the mercy and this is the grace of God that is extended to you If you repent of your sins and believe in the Lord Jesus, you will be saved. You will have peace with God. You will be reconciled, no longer an enemy, but a friend. You see, Jesus came as the friend of sinners. But when he comes again, he will come as the judge of sinners. But friend, today, you can be his friend if you believe and repent of your sins, turning to him. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for the the awesome reality that Jesus, you called us your friends, and it's friendship you desire from us. And Lord, I pray, whatever we are at right now, pray for those who believe in you already that, Lord, we will really grow in this friendship with you. And I pray, Father, for those who who have not trusted in you and who have not repented of their sins yet, that they will see that, Jesus, you are the friend of sinners and you are calling them to a friendship in yourself that must begin with faith and repentance. Lord, let these words just soak into our hearts. And Lord, let these words bear much fruit in our lives. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's close with the benediction. Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen.